commemorated. Thanks for that. Joe Powell had Joe served as a member of the Planning Board, a member of the Zoning Board, was chair of the Zoning Board for many years. And as our, select, as our um, moderator for, for 40 years, we uh, ran these meetings with uh, humility, with sincerity, and a mutual respect for whoever wrote to speak. Perhaps that's, that's Joe's lasting legacy. How we conduct ourselves as public servants. Uh, Joe also was our postmaster for, for, for many, many years. And I remember going to Joe's house one time and he came very proud to show me the, uh, his um, the certificate that he had um, um, making him postmaster signed by President Kennedy. And he told me that you know it was a real struggle for him because he was a direct delivery man at the time. He was making good money, and he wasn't sure if he wanted to give that up to take the commission to become the postmaster. So, Joey, I thought was was, 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 was uh, very interesting. He said a lot about Joe, but he's decided in the end that um, when your president calls, you should probably answer the call. He became our postmaster. So, I, I think we we owe both of these gentlemen a debt of gratitude. We also lost a, another person. It was in 2019, but I think we should mention it. It just happened recently. A couple weeks ago, we lost Kevin Hurd, who was uh, for the fire department. Kevin didn't live in the town of Rollinsburg, but he gave 36 years of his life to protecting all of us. Um, day in and day out, went to the fire department. He was sort of the steady, behind the scenes person who um, you may not even have never met, some of you, or you may have seen him, didn't know who he was, but you always saw him. And again, Kevin didn't live in Rollinsburg. He gave 36 years of his life to uh, making our community a safer and better place. So we also want to thank Kevin as well and remember him. So if you would all just take just a moment of your time today in silent reflection to remember these three gentlemen that, that, that gave their lives to this town, I think we'd all greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rollins. Thank you, Mr. Rollins. Uh, I'll make some uh, brief remarks. Uh, I know we want to get to the business of the meeting. Um, the uh, town clerk uh, is seated to my far left, uh, and if we have uh, need for votes or uh, uh, other administrative details, uh, Kate will help us with that. Uh, to my immediate left is the select board of the town administrator. Um, I will be recognizing them for responses to your questions. Uh, they will also be introducing uh, the warrant articles for discussion. Uh, the chair of the uh, budget committee, Mr. Ordway, and uh, the budget committee are seated to my right. And if I can get my computer to work. Um, uh, and they also may uh, have uh, technical information, perspectives on uh, particularly budget items, uh, and I will uh, be recognizing them from time to time as well. Uh, seated directly in front of me is town council Steve Roberts. Uh, and again, I may need to confer with him from time to time if legal questions come up. There have already been a couple of questions about <coughs> proposed amendments, and uh, Steve and others have been very helpful in tracking down information so that we can run as smooth a meeting as possible. Um, as your moderator, I get to set rules of the meeting. Uh, I hope that they're fairly common sense. Uh, but from from the legal standpoint, the most important thing for you to know is that the, this body is a legislative body. You can overrule any procedural ruling that I give to you uh, at any time just by making a motion. I move to overrule the moderator's uh, most recent move, uh, ruling and we'll take a vote on it. Um, with, the mo with it in mind that this is a deliberative session, a legislative session, each and every one of the voters present in this uh, room are legislators. Uh, that gives us the right and the duty uh, to discuss and debate the warrant articles. We can ask for information about the warrant articles. Uh, and with some important limitations if under SB2 and other state laws, we can amend the warrant articles. And we'll try to keep that easy and moving uh, smoothly for you. The way we'll move through the warrant is that I'll say that we're in discussion on a particular warrant article. I'll invite Mr. Rollo from the select board to introduce the article to us. Uh, and uh, in the interest of time, 
Uh, I am not going to read the full article. Um, it's going to be up here on the uh, screen in front of us. Uh, but at any time, the body can do, uh, ask me or direct me to read it in full. Um, to speak in favor of or in opposition to a warrant article, there's a microphone over there. There's a microphone, I guess, here. I'm uh, hoping that's for the board. Um, but there is a microphone here to my my left, your right. Uh, please use the microphone. I, um, uh, I've come to the view in my old age, as my hearing declines, um, that people with good intentions often say, oh, I don't need the mic because I speak very loudly. Uh, and what I've learned is that for those of us whose hearing is not as good, uh, it's very courteous to use the microphone and it's helpful uh, to, the, to the body as a whole. So please use the microphone. Um, I don't know that members of the um, select board or uh, the budget committee will want to speak as individuals. Um, when you're speaking as a member of the board, feel free to uh, address the, the body from the table or from uh, the, the dais from the podium. Uh, if you wish to express your personal opinion as a voter of the town, please use the uh, microphone. It's just a little bit of uh, stage movement, but it also helps to clarify for members of the, of the uh, voting citizenry of our town uh, the roles that we're playing. Uh, in terms of one of the big things for me about running a smooth meeting is avoiding crosstalk. One of the ways that we avoid people kind of getting into direct exchanges in a deliberative session is to address questions, requests for information, direct them to me, and then I'll turn to the select board or the budget committee or the police chief or somebody else uh, and we'll get that uh, answer for you. Um, but it can be very uh, confusing for members of the, of the legislative body if we start engaging directly with each other uh, and not through the mod moderator. Uh, if, uh, if amendments uh, to the warrant articles are offered, and my understanding is that there will be at least two, um, please have them in writing. There's additional paper uh, uh, with the supervisors of the checklist, and I should have recognized them. Those were the first people you met when you came in today. Uh, they are volunteers who um, uh, help us to run a smooth meeting and uh, keep track of who's voting and so forth. They have paper to write down um, amendments, and the reason for writing down amendments is so that we get a clear record. Um, the warrant articles as amended need to go on the, um, the, the ballot. Uh, and so to make sure that we do that accurately, it's critical that we get them in right. Um, when debate is over, and uh, I'll try to be sensitive to allowing a good discussion, um, but also being mindful of everyone's time, um, I'll, I'll just play, declare I find that the debate is over. The warrant article X will be placed on the ballot, either as amended or as written. Um, this body does not vote uh, to place items on the ballot. Uh, the way that SBT works is that uh, once it's a warrant article, it's going to go on the ballot, um, and uh, uh, this body here in the deliberative session can't change that. Uh, finally, um, I hope that you enjoy today's meeting. I hope that it's a good experience for you and that you walk away feeling that you spent your time well here this morning. Um, living in a democracy doesn't require us to agree about any article or amendment, um, but as we discuss and debate articles and amendments, let's remember that uh, everyone here is a, pretty much a volunteer. Um, everyone here has the best interest as they understand it of this community at heart. Um, and we should respect each other um, to the best that we can. Are there any questions before we start? Hearing none, we'll move forward. Article 1 um, is not one that we'll discuss this morning um, because it's uh, the uh, article that allows for the election uh, by the voters in the town of uh, various town officials. So um, that will go straight to the ballot. Article 2 is a zoning ordinance amendment number 1. And Mr. Rollo, will you please introduce Article 2 and provide a brief overview? I'll be happy to. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to just mention, you know, I'm going to sit down, so I can't see what I'm last on when I stand up. I can't see it, so. um, when you ask a question, I'm happy to stand up and talk to you, but I just can't see it right now. I apologize. Uh, the first zoning um, article has to do with accessory dwelling units. Uh, and I do need to mention when the warrant was drafted, and this, we've discussed this with the Department of Revenue, uh, it was um, 
the first sentence says, are you in favor of amendments to the zoning ordinance as proposed by the select board? That should be by the planning board. Um, these weren't proposed by the select board. They were proposed by the planning board for the folks that are in charge of the of, um, proposing zoning amendments or, or, or um, warrants. Um, so we have discussed this with the, um, with the Department of Revenue and um, there is not a, um, a change in the substance of the, of the article. It stays the same. They have no objection to what's actually making us a planning board because that's what it truly is. It's not a recommendation of the, of the select board. But that, what this does is it, it brings our accessory dwelling unit uh, ordinance in compliance with state law. It increases the, uh, the, uh, the square footage of that accessory dwelling unit from 500 square feet to 750 uh, square feet. Uh, as I said, this would bring us into compliance with state law. The state uh, three, four years ago at this point, uh, changed the accessory dwelling unit laws. Um, we thought at the time that ours was in compliance. It's slightly different from what the statute says, so we're, again, bringing it into compliance. And, and the main piece of it was the, uh, the square footage, so I'm going to try to answer any questions. So this meeting may, dis may discuss and debate this first uh, word or second word article. Um, state laws require that it be placed on the ballot as proposed, um, and so we are going to be discussing amendments to this um, particular word article. Any discussion in favor of or in opposition to or any requests for information? Uh, 
in the very, very small towns and unincorporated places of Coahuas County. They, they seem to still have them in the northern graph of the area. They still have this uh, on the books. But um, this is really about sort of customer service, making the process easier and more accessible, more streamlined and quicker for, for those that um, are, are looking for a building permit. So there's nothing to say that the select board still can't sign the building permit. But if they, if they designate, say, the building inspector who actually reviews all of them and is an expert on the building codes, unlike um, uh, the, the three folks that may be elected to the select board, they may or may not have to the knowledge of the building codes. The building inspector does. So it would fall to that person to uh, issue the building permit in the absence of the select board signing. So that's what, that's what the, uh, the, change, that's the proposed change of the does. This meeting may discuss and debate the article and request additional information about it. I find that debate on Article 3 is over. Uh, the article, I'm sorry, if you would please introduce yourself and state your street address. Silly Leopold, 426 Washington Street. Besides the building instructor and the references here and anybody else that no, I think I, 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 I had a little trouble hearing the question, but I think you said it has a select board does, uh, in mind anyone else who designate to, to be able to sign these um, building words and enter into that. It would be a building respect for the select board. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any further debate on board article? I find that the debate is over on Warrant Article 3, uh, and the article will be placed on the ballot. Uh, article 4, uh, Mr. Crawford will introduce it. Thank you, Joe. Um, article 4, um, as proposed by the, uh, the Planning Board, would, um, would limit the number of, of, of um, dwellings, apartments, in, um, in, in, in the commercial zone, commercial zone 1 that are, are converted to multi-use buildings. So a okay, prime example would be um, the old Bluen building. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the, the, the town meeting had adopted um, allowing multi-use in the mill district and then in commercial zone one. Uh, the idea to, um, to create multi-use uh, facilities uh, like at Bluen or in the mills, um, I think that most people have noticed Places like Newmarket, Dover, Spoonsville, um, where they've converted their old mill building to multi-use buildings, they've been quite successful in uh, and it's one expanding the tax base, but also bringing uh, new life into the communities. So the select board a number of years ago with the planning board of why to do that. Um, in the mill district, they had um, they had the number of dwellings that were allowed. Um, and it was capped. It was an oversight apparently for, for the commercial zone. So when the, when the, when the Blue One project was moving forward, there wasn't a cap. There wasn't a maximum number of, of, of dwelling units that could be in there. So moving forward, this again, as I said, would only affect zone, uh, commercial zone one, but uh, the planning board wishes to cap how many apartments could be in there for the one and six they're suggesting. So they would make this. This change would make it consistent with other places in, in the zoning ordinance, and the select board supports that change. Is there a discussion or debate, request for information on Warren Article 4? Lucy Cut, next slide, uh, Just one question, Mike, you keep referencing the Bloom building, but I see in the ordinance it says buildings constructed prior to 2019 are not being converted to multiple units without restrictions on other units. Technically, there will not be restrictions if they were built prior to 2019? That is my understanding of the ordinance. I mean, so, the, the project that, that I, I referenced was just so people would understand what kind of projects they are. And that one's already been approved, so it shouldn't affect. We're not going to retroactively change the project, right? So, but, but that building was built prior to 2019. It allows for a process. I'm sorry? But that building was built prior so, to So, Mrs. Putnam, I'm going to interrupt you again. Um, please, 
just so we so we model it correctly for the body. Request for information, come to the moderator, and then I'll ask Mr. Robert to avoid just that problem of direct interaction. So, Mr. Moderator, I'm allowed to because the Blue and Building was built prior to 2019. So, I'm just trying to clarify that which buildings is, is it only impact buildings built after 2019? So, Mr. Rallo, can you answer that question? I can make the ordinance that come forward. Is Yes, so buildings constructed prior to 2019 shall be allowed. There are no other buildings in, in that zone that have been constructed post-2019. It's permissive language that would allow projects to move forward, in my understanding. We have established a process that doesn't exist currently for folks to apply to construct uh, apartments in a multi-use building. I'm hoping I'm not fighting the water anymore. I don't know why we introduced the planning board about the planning board problems we're doing this, but this is the process we should get into. I apologize. I'm going to allow the former chair of the planning board, who's now the town administrator, who's also a resident, so we don't need permission, to answer, partially answer this question. And again, this is one of my apologies for not answering it. I just want to clarify that it's the primary purpose of this amendment is to create consistency in the zoning ordinance because the amendment that passed through town meeting either in 18 or 17 was, was an impartial amendment of, of the ordinance. So it allowed for mixed use, but it did not address the restriction of the limit to six units per building within all of the areas of the ordinance. So there was a part of the ordinance that was not addressed. There was a part of the ordinance that was not addressed in that previous amendment. So this creates consistency. And so also a process. So it doesn't eliminate options. It creates a process by which an applicant can, um, if it meets these provisions in the ordinance, potentially have a mixed use. Um, as Michael said, I, I don't believe there are any other buildings for which it would be applicable, but it just um, creates consistency so that um, somebody has a clear process ahead. There was um, the process uh, by which the Blue and Building went through the planning board was not as streamlined as it should have been, and we don't want to be burdensome to applicants by not being um, consistent and direct and open about the process. So it's just important to, to make sure that all the parts of the ordinance that address a topic um, address it in the same manner so that it's clear what is permissible and what is not and what is the process. Thank you, Mr. Kendall. Uh, other questions or yes? Yes, you could have General John Sullivan. Um, I, I was reading where it said prior to 2019, and I understand that, but it does say uh, shall have approximately TO, which is a typo, it should be TWO, uh, two parking spaces per residential unit. I know there's not a lot of parking availability, but should it say at least two? Because approximate says, well, it might be one and a half, or maybe three quarters. So, a question to the moderator about parking, uh, Mr. Rowe, or Ms. Kendall? Yes, so I'm going to give my best answer uh, from my limited time on the planning board and dealing with some of these projects. Um, I think the reason that we've been going for approximately, I think my green class off, I have to see you, sorry. Um, when, um, in a project, I, and, I, and I hate just to, to, to limit it to, 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 to the blue project, but it's easy to, to, to understand. There's limited space. We're not building any new. We're not creating any new space out of the village in, in, in that in that zone, that commercial zone. So to allow a project like that to move forward which would be beneficial to the town. Ultimately, the, the planning board um, would require some flexibility. Um, if there if there was a strict, there needed to be two parking spaces per unit, um, and not a lot of flexibility. The project may not be able to move forward. There are times of day where um, the parking spaces, the two parking space uh, rule per unit may not be applicable uh, during the day when there's business up front. 
Um, there's uh, additional parking in the rear when, when folks are at home where they can use. And then in, in the converse of that night, there's parking in the front that the residents may that you would typically park in the back could use. So because of the multi-use, there's um, there are different needs and requirements uh, on, on what type of parking spaces there are. And I think that's why they want to use approximately because it gives them some some flexibility. And if I put you that again, I'll turn it to the that's kind of down this way, but that's my understanding of why they want that flexibility. Thank you. This is required for you. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate on our floor? So you live full of um Washington Street problems, right? Would this be applicable if a building uh, in the commercial one zone was torn down, they could build a new building with more than six dwellings in it? And is there a place that the general public can find the most current zone ordinances? I'm going to take the last question first. I'm going to ask if you want to answer the question. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. That's okay. So we're, we're, we're all getting used to the new, uh, the, the newer system here. So I should have said that at the beginning. Please be kind to all of us. We're still learning as we go. Um, the most current, up-to-date uh, zoning ordinance should be available via the town website. They have the zoning ordinance that are up there. There also um, we have hard copies for purchase. We have uh, we have updated. So all the planning board member director working off of the same. Ordinance book, not the book. Um, um, and those are also available for sale if people want to purchase a hard copy if you don't want to get how you can be or print it yourself um, to the, the, um, the town administrator. Um, I'm trying to think of your, your first question. If a building was torn down, um, I think it's probably a better question for, the, for a member of the planning board, but let's try this but I think the town administrator might be able to answer that better. Yeah, I recognize it. Um, Ms. Kendall? According to this amendment, no, no properties will contain more than six units. Um, it doesn't, there's always a process if you don't like whatever you determine. And we can't hear it. So the there we go. Uh -huh. Thank you. So, According to this amendment, which again just makes the ordinance consistent throughout, if it's constructed prior to 2019, it's one thing. But as you point out, if you're going to build a new building, then the first part of that language, the first part of that language applies, which means it will have no more than six dwelling units in the structure. You could appeal that or um, ask for you know an exception to the administrative decision through the ZBA. But as the zoning ordinance is proposed that in this section, it would be limited to six units. I have a follow-up question for you. Briefly? Um, if the town moved forward, I know it's not on the budget, but another example that comes to mind is the town hall that went up for sale. Could it fall into X number of dwellings because it was built before 2019? It would, it would have, this, this, this language. There's something about that not being yeah. able, I think. The language would apply as proposed. Um, if this language were adopted, it would allow for a process by which if there's enough, according to whatever the proposal is, it depends on what the proposal is, right? And how many units it would be and so forth. But it would depend on parking and all the other provisions of the zoning ordinance being met. Um, and then if it meets all those regulations, then it, it could be approved, yes. I find that debate on Article 4 is over. Uh, the article is as uh, proposed by the Planning Board, the Select Board will be placed on the ballot. Article 5, Mr. Rollo, would you please introduce it? Yes, finally, one that we're actually uh, we, we were involved with. <laughs> um, so Article 5 uh, was actually requested our Chief of Police um, to um, update our, our minimum housing standards ordinance that the, the town meeting passed last year uh, to include uh, nuisance um, activity and nuisance properties. Um, 
and to hold those landlords uh, accountable um, for their tenants' behavior. There are uh, there are properties within the town um, that the police go to several times, over and over and over again. Um, they are limited in, in what can be done. Um, the chief has gone and looked at ordinances um, that uh, exist in the city of Dover, where um, uh, landlords can be held accountable for their tenants' actions if they don't take any action to uh, to, to remedy uh, the uh, constant nuisance behavior. Um, and the select board agrees with it. There's an outline in the ordinance, um, copies of which I, are available online. We didn't print the entire ordinance, it's several pages long, but um, that outline what nuisance activity consists of. Um, I'd be happy to defer to the chief if you're seeing one of his officers, but I don't think he's here, so uh, I can't defer to him. Um, but uh, it was at his request to help uh, alleviate some issues, specifically. Um, there have been issues um, in the village where there's absentee landlords that are not responsive to um, to uh, complaints against some of their tenants, and those uh, folks that uh, live in the village have to deal with the consequences. It's not terribly fair uh, for that for those folks that are trying to live their lives and have to deal with some of the neighbors that are uh, or are trouble cases. So it's like we're agreed with the chief and we'll place it on the board. Thank you, Mr. Brawl. Is there discussion, debate, or request for information on Ward Article 5? I find that the debate on Article 5 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Article 6 pertains to the resident, resident tax, and again, I'll recognize Mr. Brawl. Thank you, Mr. Rock. Moderator. So, Article 6 is by petition. Uh, this was uh, not um, promulgated by the select board. Uh, a group of folks got together. Um, started a petition for an article to um, repeal the requirement that um, we pay a residence tax. Uh, we're almost really one of a handful of towns that uh, still has a residence tax, uh, some commonly referred to as the head tax. Um, I think you all will know what it means, it's the little uh, cards that come with your motor vehicle registrations that um, <coughs> some of us remember or some of us don't remember, you'll tell us as well. At times, and not bringing it and paying it, and then um, you're not able to uh, register the motor vehicle until hey, you're, you're, you're a residence tax. Um, folks have seen it as a nuisance over the years. Um, it would eliminate approximately, depending on on the budget year, between um, eight and thirteen thousand dollars worth of revenue to the town. So people should be aware of that. Um, in the uh, this means that the excess money will be made up to general taxation. Uh, so instead of paying your ten dollars directly to the town clerk or town to the tax collector, pardon me, or deputy tax collector, it would just be part of your regular uh, property tax bill. Um, I can tell you that uh, just this past week we abated, which means we just did away with uh, about eight hundred and eighty dollars, I believe worth of these, um, of these um, residence taxes that either people have aged out, so when you turn 65, you don't have to pay the residence tax any longer. Or if there, we have a lot of uh, transient uh, residents that live mostly in the village, so if they move out of town, you can't, it's, it's difficult to collect a residence tax for people that aren't living very long. So um, that was approximately $880 we paid it just the other night. So, and it's up to the, the tax collector, the deputy tax collector, who is the town clerk case to um, chase after people um, to, to pay this tax. So there's a number of folks that got together and didn't care for it any longer and they sent a petition to the, uh, the select board and we placed no more. This deliberative session can discuss and debate the article. Mr. Moderator, Vernon Grosher from South Street, you can play. I suspect you would have wanted to have a discussion before this meeting. Can't hear you? Anyway, can't hear you. I am not. Can't hear you? Now, can you hear me? Yes, you can. No, it's just how close you get. Let me do it this way, okay? <clears throat> I'm opposed to this particular Warren article for two reasons. First of all, you eliminate this, you shift the burden of the uh, residence tax onto property owner taxpayers. Okay, there's $13,000 dollars 
gets shifted over to property taxpayers. The other part is there's been some discussion in the past about don't you think it's time some of the renters start contributing directly to the town's expenses? And this is one way to do it. So, personally, I'm opposed to this sworn article, and I think it should be voted down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kircher. Is there further debate and discussion on Warren Article 5? 6, excuse me. Kate Nesman, 52 Heritage Drive. Um, we are one of two communities in the state of New Hampshire still collecting. And there's only two, so when we get done, there's only one. It is a form and people decide the additional $10. And the bulk of the ones that we collect every year are from the taxpayers. We never catch the renters. Some of our rental units change six or eight times in a year. So we're already paying it. And it, just, it is a form and people decide. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion and debate on Article 6. Lorraine Hansen Watson Lane. The reason I would support this article is because I know when I have spoken with um, the tax collector and the town clerk from time to time, I realized that there's an awful lot of time expended on finding people to pay and then rebating the, the monies that they overpaid. And overall, even though we may be getting some revenue in, I suspect an awful lot of that revenue is actually eaten up in the time spent by the persons who are trying to administer this and the post and the rest of the thing. So I think that in that respect, added to what our town folks already said, I think that I would support this article. Thank you. Further discussion and debate on Water Article 6. At Silly Leopold, uh, Washington Street, can you tell us um, what the, t can someone tell us what the town currently spends either in time or in the cost of this and what the late fees are that would adjust, like, I know it's $10, but if you don't get it in by a certain date, we're going to charge the late fee. <coughs> Any worries about the um, cost of enforcement and late fees? Mr. Brown. And I'll take the last question first. I actually know the answer to that. Uh, it's a dollar, I believe, uh, is the late fee. Um, there are um, there are printing costs. We did not break it down by printing costs. Um, the postage cost is actually covered because it goes out with your um, your motor vehicle um, uh, registration notice. So that's covered. At uh, one time, it would have been actually mailed. Uh, there is staff time, though, that. Um, that uh, Ms. Hansen mentioned. Uh, again, this is this wasn't created or brought forward by the select board. This was by petition. So, if you, some of your questions may be better. Well, I guess the question of motive may be better answered by those that, uh, that petitioned it. But um, there is staff time that we know uh, goes into this. And I know Andrea. There is no um, set sort of standard form. That the, that the state issues uh, to track these things. Andrea, our tax collector, does a wonderful job of uh, keeping track of all these folks. Um, she has to keep a list of uh, who's paid and who hasn't, and then has to cross-reference that with who, uh, who may have turned 65, um, who may have passed away. I forgot to mention that. You don't have to pay it you're no longer here. Kind of hard to collect it. Um, and again, folks chasing down folks that may or may or not have moved. So. Um, there is quite a bit of staff time. Have we figured out exactly how much that costs? No, we have not. But again, this wasn't brought forward by the school. I have one more Further question. Quick question. Um, if this is passed, has the town already started collecting? So what happens? Or have they not? When do they start collecting? And do people get a refund from January to passage or? Um, the, so a question to the moderator about uh, the effective passage. Right. The uh, the uh, cards have not gone out. They go out after uh, the March election, I think, typically. So. I think Ms. Kendall may have additional information to share on that question. It follows the same.
cycle as the property tax um, year. So April 1st would be the new year for the resident tax. So anything paid prior to April 1st would be the 2018 resident tax. Thank you very much. I find that uh, debate on Warrant Article 6 is over. The article will be placed on the ballot. Article 7 pertains to the operating budget, and again, I believe Mr. Rombo will introduce the uh, article to us. Yes, thank you, Mr. Monroe. Uh, I, my intention is not to go line by line through the operating budget. I think we can all thank for that. Um, what I want to do is hit the highlights of uh, changes within the budget that we're proposing. I have a copy in front of me. There's physical copies of the operating budget on the back table if you do not have one. And I will be happy to discuss whatever line you want to discuss if you have a, a particular issue with one of them that I don't bring up. Uh, the first thing in the, in the operating budget I'd like to bring up is the compensation of our employees. We are um, suggesting a 2% across the board uh, raise for employees. Um, there will be merit increases uh, for the Rawlinson Police Department. Uh, last year, the, at the request of uh, members of the budget committee, the chief of police decided that he would uh, try to implement a uh, process by which the uh, officers would receive merit increases. Uh, the salary to the Rawlinson Fire Department personnel um, was increased um, in an attempt to bring salaries to, uh, to the level of minimum wage. Uh, the officer, uh, rather the, uh, the men and women of the Rawlinson Fire Department that don't want to answer the calls uh, were not making minimum wage, which I think is unconscionable. Um, the, uh, there were some differences with the, uh, with the budget committee. The, uh, the select board had originally suggested that uh, compensation should be 2% across the board for both town employees and the merit increases for the police. The budget committee disagreed and they want to go 3% for the police uh, for merit increases to put money back in to reflect that um, and decreased um, the increase to the problems with fire department uh, by half. Um, personal administration, the select board has um, followed the recommendations of the ad hoc town manager committee that was established uh, at, by the last uh, town meeting and created the position of town administrator. Um, the town administrator sitting there. Um, the municipalities um, for year after year after year have been saddled with additional requirements, reporting, rather, reporting requirements, filing requirements, both with the state and with the federal government, um, whether it's the Department of Environmental Protection, um, what we do with our wastewater doing in the Salmon Falls River, for uh, the Department of Revenue, there are additional requirements that require additional specialized staff assistance. Rawlinson is one of the few communities in Stratford County that does not have either a town manager or a town administrator. Uh, this select board thought it was time to, uh, to finally uh, change that. Uh, this budget would include that, um, that funding for that, and keeping a part time bookkeeper is still a requirement. One of the largest increases in this budget comes in insurance. There's a 33% increase in premiums. 10% um, of that comes from the carrier itself, so that's a 10% increase in the actual rates overall that we were paying. The bulk of that, though, the other 23%, is a change in what type of plans uh, the employees have. Um, there have been a number of uh, changes from uh, single uh, person to, uh, to family plans. And with that comes additional costs. Uh, that is out of the control of the town. What is in control of the town is what type of policy we offer. Um, we did change the, uh, the plan that we offer our employees. It's still a very, uh, uh, still a very good plan, uh, but it uh, requires additional cost uh, sharing between the employee and the town. So the employee would pay a slightly larger uh, copay uh, for the insurance uh, as a sign of uh, trying to work with the town. Uh, buildings and facilities, we're looking, we're, we're budgeting for a 40% increase in the water and sewer rates um, uh, that are out of our control. That's up to the water and sewer district to set those rates, but we've been told to anticipate a 40% increase over the year. Uh, currently, it looks like about 12% has been realized, but after they have their district meeting, 
we're told to plan, and it may not happen, but we're told to plan at least uh, for a 40% increase. Um, and all we can do is that can budget for that. If it doesn't materialize, then we're not going to spend the money clearly on that, but we need to be prepared. Uh, there's been a request uh, to replace the chairs in the meeting room uh, at the town hall. There are uh, chairs that anyone who comes to a meeting at a select board meeting will notice that are in certain disrepair. They have, some of them have large stains on them, some of them are just falling apart. Um, so we have uh, decided that it may be time to finally replace those chairs. And we're hoping this year to finally paint and repair the town hall portico. We're hoping to do that last year's budget. Other things that came up during the budget year, we weren't able to do them. Um, the 2019 road plan, uh, which, if you recall, last year the town meeting decided to put the road maintenance money into uh, into the operating budget. Um, that continues for this year. Our plan is to finish the second half of um, the 2018 project. So that would have been Roberts Farm, which is Heritage Drive and uh, Moses Car Road, and. Um, finish uh, up work down at the Woodland, which is uh, Woods Run and uh, Riverwood. Uh, and in addition to that, um, start working on Sligo Road uh, from the entrance of Woods Run up to Bear Road. I think anyone who's gone on Sligo Road in the past year will notice that it's uh, in places it's down to, uh, there's no more cave. So it's one of the longest, if it's the longest road in town. Uh, long overdue for repair, so uh, we're going to start working on that. We anticipate um, uh, being able to do all that in this budget year. Uh, we had hoped to get a little further on the Roberts Farm uh, project in the 2018 budget year, um, but when the, uh, when the uh, firm that was doing our paving was out there started, and started doing the work, uh, they discovered that there was inadequate um, fill in the road. Uh, when the road was put in the first time, um, instead of that, it, may, it could have been the industry standard at the time, but I, 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 I find it hard to believe, but they used certain, they used inadequate fill, let's just say that. In one case, the, um, they pulled out an old burnt out shed um, that had just been thrown in there. Um, and then, like I said, there were inadequate materials used to build the road in the first place. So. Um, to try to bring the road up to, to modern specs. So there's a little bit of overage there, so we can do as much as we hope to. Uh, so we're, we will, though, with um, this year's appropriation, be able to finish that project. So, and it had been the, the intention of the select board, anyways, to have the project put down the binder code and then put on the finished code the next year. We've done that successfully on Foundry and on Bear Road as well in the past. So overall, there is an increase of 8.8% in the operating budget. Um, I think when you, um, those of you that are here, hopefully will go to the school district at the of session, you'll notice that they're, they're, uh, they have a significant decrease in their budget. So any increases um, that the town may be um, asking for this year will be certainly offset by, by what the school is offering. And I think with that, oh, I would, should mention as well that um, the difference between the, the budget that the, board of, the select board had recommended and the budget committee, and I, th I think we should commend the budget committee uh, in their process this year. Um, uh, Mr. Ordway, who's the chair of the budget committee, uh, and his members did a, uh, a fine job trying to uh, to uh, make adjustments and make recommendations to the select board bottom line. And in the end, the difference between what the select board and what the budget committee came up with, um, the slight difference of $2,572. Uh, lower is what the budget committee is recommending and what the select board recommended and uh, the select board is recommending. If we go along with that number, we thank the budget committee for their uh, due diligence. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have on the operating board. We're in uh, discussion, debate on Warren Article 7. Hi, Nancy Dion, Rollins Road. Uh, could you tell the public what the impact of the taxes is going to be on the budget? Question to the moderator about the tax impact. Yes, I can. <coughs> no, no. I thought I had it on my cheat sheet. Okay, well, I'm going to 
defer to the town administrator because I thought I had it written down. I guess I did. Ms. Kendall. The operating budget, as as you read it here, would be an increase of 29 cents on the tax rate. Uh, the all the board articles, as you see them currently in their current form in front of you, um, in addition to the operating budget, if it were all to pass, it would be an increase on the tax rate of $1.33. Well, that's as the, as the warrant stands now. So $0.29 cents on the operating budget, and then all together, every other warrant article as presented, it's my understanding that there's some amendments coming forward, would be $1.33 total. And so that's $1.33 per thousand. Leopold? Yeah. Celia Leopold, Washington Street. In the past, you have projected out several years on, or the budget committee has projected out several years how high our tax rate will increase. A couple years ago, you were saying you were hoping to keep it at 2%. This year, it's jumping to 8%. Do you have any predictions of will it maintain this level, go down in the future? Are you sure? And if we were to add the police station in this year, do we know what that would have added to this percentage rate increase? I have a series of questions to the moderator about the uh, future tax impacts and the impacts if there had been a uh, police station. I, th I think I'm going to roll that last question uh, out of the board just because we don't have a warrant article for a police station on our, on our warrant, uh, and therefore I, I don't think it's remain to this year's discussion. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, we, yes, so we, we um, there were a number of uh, increases in this budget. I think I mentioned the largest one being the, uh, the uh, insurance increases that were, were, were out of our control. Um, we, um, we are playing catch up in a number of places dealing with, um, as you'll see, I mean, before the warrant, the issue of deferred maintenance and come back to, um, come back to the vendors, um, where we uh, need to try and get some insufficiencies. But yes, we, we, we are, in, uh, our intent is not to have to come forward with, a, with an increase this large. We're hoping to keep it lower, but um, do I have a chart with that, that, that um, Forecasting increases year over year. Um, no, I don't have any trouble. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Is there a further debate and discussion on Warrant Article 7? Yeah, please go right ahead and just approach the mic and. Suzanne here with Warrant Lane. Um, so, most of what I'm about to say, I think, is just general information with regard to taxes in the town. And um, the context in which I, I try to think about this, and the all of us should try to think about this, is the, the fact that, and I've done work on this, and I know that there have been materials made available to the town, but if you look at the municipal tax rate for the town of Rome Street, and you compare it to just about any significant comparison that you might find, we are near the bottom in all of these. So, the municipal tax rate in the uh, in Stratford County, the municipal tax rate of municipalities that have populations within uh, 2,000 to 3,000, and our town is right in the middle, 2,500. The municipal tax rate of towns that are comparable to us within uh, the amount of uh, property valuation, we're near, we're near the bottom. So it's it, while the overall increase seems high, it's, I think we have to keep that in mind. And the other thing to keep in mind is that in order to do some of the things that need to be done or in order to try to deal with insurance over which we have no control, we are fortunate that the school has come in with the nineteen savings on the tax rate. So with this dollar thirty-three, the, the overall impact is, what is it, 14 cents? Something like that on, on the tax rate. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, specifically with regard to the budget, th thank you to all of you who do work on this. It's, it's really very difficult. It's complicated. I'm disappointed to see that there isn't a projection unless I've missed it, but uh, maybe we'll be able to do it again uh, for the following year. But the, the, what I'd like to address 
is the uh, salaries to our employees. And I'm happy to see that the Budget Committee made an attempt to increase um, salaries of the police department. I believe that all of our employees, all of them, are underpaid with regard to bargaining. They don't need market. And so any attempt to try to lift them up is, uh, is helpful. What, what, frankly, I don't see the wisdom of, however, is trying to fund this by reducing um, salaries from another set of employees, in this case the Rollinsford Farm Department. So, um, and also, but there's also reducing the, or not providing 2% across the board to the library director. So, my comment, Mr. Moderator, is through you to the board, I would encourage you all to uh, do the right thing and find a way in the budget to uh, restore the money to the Rollinsford Fire Department and also to the library director. Same here, 14 Virginia, right? um, so just for clarification, um, regarding the tax impact, um, I'm, I keep coming back to this because the budget can be asked multiple times what the tax impact is going to be. And the first time we got a response, it was 58 cents per thousand. We went through the math several times. Um, so um, I know for my sake, um, having done the math several times, I don't understand where you're coming up with 29 cents impact. Um, so if you could explain that, that would be great. I'm um, sorry, talking to Mr. Moderator. A um, request so to explain the, the manner of calculating the impact on the tax rate? Correct, because that is not what we were provided as uh, budget committee members. That was not the figure we got. And so, Ms. Hangler, just to be sure, are you speaking as a member of the budget committee or a citizen? Um, I'm are questioning you it as a citizen. Okay. So you, so you're, okay. and you're well within your rights to do that just as you refer to your role as a member of the committee, I want to be sure that this body understands when the budget committee has a position and when a member of the budget committee has a position. Okay. So the question is uh, uh, calculation manner and Ms. Kimball. So we did have this conversation a number of times and the number has changed. And the reason for that is because while it sounds like a simple calculation, there are a number of things that go into it. And there's a back of the envelope way to do this calculation, which is essentially the amount of money you have to raise, which is the amount of money that you need for general operations and things that you are planning to purchase um, that, it, that you do not otherwise have revenue for. So, you know, not to overstate the obvious, but the more vehicle registrations we have, the less money we have to raise by taxation. So, even just to calculate the amount of money you have to raise by taxation is a calculation in and of itself. Um, the amount of revenue to be considered revenue, um, and then, so, so the amount to be raised by taxation is divided by the valuation. And so, to be clear to the public present, we always try to provide this information because we understand that it's the context by which you would make a decision, and that's reasonable. Um, it is not an easy calculation to perform, and there are a number of moving parts in it. And so one of the reasons why the, the number changed, and, and I've consulted with this through our um, town CPA and with the State Department of Revenue, um, the, the offsetting revenues. Um, the, the select board has the flexibility to use what's called overlay but money from the fund balance to offset the tax rate um, when they do that in November. Um, so, so while we project what we think the tax rate is going to be, valuations change, the number of people who have veteran credits or elderly exemptions, a number of things can change, which is why these, just like any budget, it's the best guess you can provide at the time. And so, yes, it was 58, or 58 cents I reported on just the operating budget through the process uh, with the budget committee because at that time it was a simple back of the envelope calculation. After inputting all of the actual projected numbers through the website with the Department of Revenue, we have come up with a better number. And finding a specific number um, by which I can tell you we have arrived at a different calculation, I can't provide that information. There, there are too many factors involved in that. 
So that's an estimated tax impact, then, is what you're saying, because there's so many variables. Is, is, so that would be an estimated tax impact. It, it sounds like, yes, an estimated tax impact using tools provided by the Department of Revenue Administration. Okay. So what we, um, so what I as a budget member receive is not accurate information. Um, so next point. Um, one of the concerns I have about this operating budget um, is that five years ago, we had an operating budget of 1.4 million. Today, we have an operating budget of 2.4 million. So in five years, um, we've seen an increase of a million dollars, of which 350,000, I will grant you, is for roads. But that still leaves us at over $635,000 in increases in five years. Um, so that's one of my concerns about this budget. Um, one of the other things that we talked about was um, about the reduction in proposed salary um, increases. Um, the, the fire department asked for a 24% increase, um, which is the highest increase um, any department has asked for, but certainly in the last five years. Um, if that's approved, um, that salary line item will have increased 88% in five years. Um, the police department um, increase was initially a decrease in line item, and I'm concerned about that, and I think and as a member of the budget committee and the president, I support the 3% increase because we can't staff that department. We're understaffed and we can't retain or recruit people. Um, so I am in favor of the 3% increase to the police salary department. One of the other, and my last point is um, that we, you know, we have certainly invested um, quite a bit of money in the last couple of years into the fire department. Um, you know, 450000 for a fire engine, another 40000 for a command vehicle, and now 24% increase in salaries, um, $80,000 in radios proposed. Next year, you know, another $50,000 in radios, another $30,000 potential in forestry vehicle. You know, we really need to start thinking about if it's cost effective to regionalize that. Thank you, Thank you Ms. St. Clair. For the debate and discussion on Article 7. Mr. Yes, Moderator, I'd like to just address the salaries. Okay, um, and, I, and I think that we're, we're, we're partially we're in agreement. The um, that the, the, the salary, the base salaries of the Rome to the police department are under market. That, and what do I mean by that? Competing communities, not just in our county, but of our so, our same population size, our same tax base, are below where they should be. For a number of years, select boards have been playing catch-up. They've been doing market-based adjustments. And it's, they've been insufficient, but they've been increases nonetheless. And, and past boards have been trying to make up uh, for, for, for past inaction, let's just put it that way. Um, the new approach that, um, and I commend them for that, and I think had the chief of police come in and ask for a market adjustment, we would have, uh, I have to imagine, we probably would have granted that request. He did not do that. He followed the advice of, of certain members of the budget committee to go to a merit-based system. So if you truly, which go with the individual, they do not go by the position. So if you were truly concerned about increasing the base salaries of police officers so that we can retain them, I would suggest the approach of, of a merit increase is probably not the way to go because it's a, it's a race to the bottom. If you want to do a market increase with coupled with a merit increase, that's how you should probably would be retaining police officers. Um, in regards to us cutting uh, the salaries of, of police officers, I think that's what I just heard. That's not true. What the select board was saying was there was a 2% across the board raise to town employees. And we believe that it would be equitable that all employees get the same raise. Not certain departments get one raise, and other departments get others. There is sufficient money 
within the budget, if the, actually, even with the budget that was proposed, if the, with the reduction that the, 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 the select board had, had suggested, within that line, but not all that money is used in, with salaries because there are vacancies, there are officers that don't actually make up to the amount that was appropriate for that position um, each year. If the select board wanted to, and working with the police chief, we could still give that 3% raise, working off of that, off for, based on merit. So I think it's, a, it's inconsistent and it's misleading to say that the select board wanted to cut police salaries. Uh, as far as the Rollins for the fire department goes, there are 36 individuals sharing that salary line. Now let's look at it. Let's get to the fire department, just for a moment. Salaries. The, the proposed, the 2018 uh, budget was 41 cents. Uh, revised budget. And in 2017 it was 38.5. Uh, in the proposed budget that um, we have before us, it's 46,000. The select board had recommended 51 because that's what the, uh, the, the fire chief uh, was trying to uh, was trying to bring his one is trying to bring his his personnel up to meet minimum state minimum wage. Now remember, these are 36 individuals. If we want, I'm loath to to pit department against department. And that's, that's also some of what's been going on around this town. People say, well, you know, the fire department gets all these new toys. If I hear one more person refer to a fire truck or radios as a toy, we're going to have to go outside and have a conversation. These are tools that people use to save personal property. These are not toys. Um, the Rollins Police Department drives cruisers. They have handguns to protect us. They're not toys either. Um, and they're just as valuable to the select board as the fire personnel are. But we're talking about X amount of people sharing a salary line in the police department, X amount of people sharing a line on, on the fire department. And there are 36 of them on the fire side that do not make minimum state minimum wage. So when your house is burning down, I want you to remember that. That the people running in to save your family or your personal property right now, they're not making state minimum wage. And to this board member, that's unconscionable. We will find a way, the select board, whether this budget passes or the default budget passes, we are committed to trying to make the fire department whole and to make that right, to wrong that right. Regardless, this is the bottom line number, and I, I will stop now, Mr. Moderator, but I, 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 I really, I, I'm tired of people trying to pick department against department because it's not fair. They're all valuable town employees to provide a, 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 an amazing service to this community. With that, I'll be quiet. No comments. All right, and uh, just one housekeeping detail. Budget committee, you're just a little bit out of my line of sight, so if there's an article or a, a comment that you want to respond to as the committee, just wave or throw something at me. Ms. Hewitt. Suzanne Hewitt, North Lane. Uh, I'm hoping Ms. Potter would like to provide some information on the estimated tax impact, tax rate. Um, the budget committee is presented with the report from the Department of Revenue Administration. It's the MS 757. 737. So this is this is the budget report. It should be posted now. You should be seeing it. It was signed by a quorum of the budget committee. And if you look, it, it has all the operating budget, it has all of the warrant articles, it has all the anticipated revenue, both to offset the operating budget and to offset warrant articles for capital. And the, the this department, which is the department that sets the tax rate. It, in its final analysis, if you look at the second to the last page of that report, it tells you what the estimated tax impact is, which is the very best estimate you can have. This is from the DRE, DRA based on all of the information that we have entered. And that is 1.3 million, something like that, second to the last page, and if you divide that by the current property valuation, you get the tax rate. And so right now, the, that resolves itself to an increase of about $1.34 or $1.33, something like that, depending on which way the pennies go. And again, with regard to, you know, if you resolve that with a uh, decrease of $1.19 that is uh, coming from the school district, it's a net increase of the municipality in the school of 13 cents. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hewitt. Ms. 
Jane Miller. Same similar 1421. Uh, so just for clarification, I think the school increase is a dollar thirteen. I mean decrease is a dollar thirteen, not a dollar nineteen. Um, but my point is about as I'm a member of the budget committee, um, when we were evaluating the increase for the fire department, um, I asked multiple times for the formula um, that they used to determine what they were being paid. Um, so we could somehow figure out, you know, if there really was a discrepancy, if they were really making less than the minimum wage. Um, I asked for the number of man hours that went into that pool of money. We received nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, you know, there was at least a month's time that we waited for those numbers. And we never received any information about how they were compensated. Well, we didn't receive any information from the chief about how they were compensated and how many hours go into that pool of money. So the decision that I, as a budget committee member, made was based on my very limited information and trying to keep a modest increase for the public. Are there any further discussion on Warrant Article 7? It is by far the biggest impact on our pocketbooks. I find that debate on Article 7 is over. Uh, the article will be placed on the ballot. Article 8 pertains to the purchase of a plow truck for the Rollins for Highway Department. And again, I'll ask Mr. Rollo to introduce the article to us. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We're not even halfway there, folks. So, <laughs> anyways, Article 8. It's good to have a, a good discussion on this. Means that we all to pay for it. Article 8 is to purchase a new plow truck for the department. It's replacing a 2008 truck that was on the war was supposed to be on the warrant last year. To replace, we asked the highway department to see if we can get another year out of it. They didn't do that for us. Um, the concern with this vehicle is that it um, is underpowered. Uh, I spoke with the road agent, who I'm sure can, can fill us in further, um, just this morning before uh, the meeting started. And um, it failed to start four times during the last uh, snowstorm. They had to. Um, I'll, I'll let him answer what they did to get it started, but so it failed four times during this last snowstorm. Uh, it's currently over at Mick Heavy Truck over um, So there's, there's issues with this vehicle. 100% um, of the cost to replace this vehicle will be coming out of the, the CIP fund. We've been putting money aside every year for it, so there should be there will be no impact on uh, taxation. And, so there's no confusion. This is money that is in the account. I'm not saying, oh, we're going to tax you on another warrant and put it in and take it out. This is money that is in the CIP currently to pay for this. Um, and again, as I said, it was supposed to be replaced in 2018. It was not. It is a 2008 vehicle that was underpowered and overbuilt, apparently, when it was purchased, according to the road. The purchase had not been built, so you have to talk to him about it. He has also got an estimate on, uh, it would be the intention of the select board to um, to sell this vehicle and it estimate, estimated that we could get approximately $20,000 for it. So there could be potentially $20,000 in, in revenue coming back to the town uh, if we were to sell this. Uh, the road agent tells us that um, the vehicle, if it wasn't for all the hills, that it's being, it's being asked to go up and down. It's still suitable for someone who owns a shopping center or a uh, mobile home park. I think he's discussed with, with an owner of one mobile home park that might be interested in purchasing it from us. So there is interest with, for the vehicle. Um, and it still, it still has usable years left to it uh, if, you're, if you own nothing but a flat surface. So again, I'm happy to try to answer any questions. And if, the, if it's the will of the body refer to the uh, road agent, we can probably show you what, what happened in the last few days. Okay, thank you. We're in discussion and debate on Warrant Article 8. And I don't mean to be premature, but I see no debate. Um, we're finished with debate on Warrant Article 8. Um, that article will be placed on the ballot. Article 9 pertains to the purchase of a police cruiser. And again, I'll ask Mr. Rowell to introduce it. Thanks, Mr. Moderator. This is the, uh, the annual request of the uh the police department to replace a cruiser. Um, this year, the chief would like to do it a little differently. He would like to um, enter into a three-year lease agreement, um, totaling the amount of $34,000. Um, 
his his rationale and his reasoning for wanting to go the least route this time around. Um, is because we're trying, he's trying to uh, play catch up. He's got vehicles now with very very high mileage on them. Um, he would like to um, sort of stabilize uh, the amount of miles that are on on the fleet before we go back to purchasing them again. Uh, the select board uh, thought that made sense. Uh, we we would be asking to withdraw twenty-five thousand dollars for the uh, for the uh, first year's payment. Uh, that covers the thirteen thousand dollars for the first year's payment and to equip the vehicle. It's actually, the chief has told us uh, recently after the warrant was drafted that it will cost twenty-six thousand um, dollars, and he anticipates being able to find that extra thousand dollars within his uh, his lines of the operating budget. Thank you, Mr. Follow. Is there discussion and debate on Warrant Article 9? Ms. Leopold. <laughs> um, so, I'm not sure if anybody here can answer this, but do we know um, if there's a cap on the number of miles on these vehicles? I know some um, personal vehicles, the cap line to be able to pay extra over whatever you do in your lease. And then the maintenance, um, is that covered? Some of that or all of that covered within the lease <coughs> or is that going to be above and beyond the additional expense? Question to the moderator about maintenance and on uh, uh, mileage. Maintenance I can answer. I, I don't know what um, what terms on mileage the chief for but my my I mean, it truly does a guess is that um, that because it's a municipal vehicle for police use that probably is either very, very high uh, upward limit on, on mileage or there isn't one at all. I don't know. That's a question for the chief and I don't see them still. So um, maintenance. Um, we would still be responsible for maintenance just like this if we had purchased the vehicle. There would be, um, um, there is um, a warranty for the vehicle, it's a new vehicle, so just like if you were, um, you were leasing a vehicle for your personal use, you'd still be responsible for, for, for maintenance on it, but unless there was an item that was covered under warranty, there'd be no difference here, so. Thank you, Mr. Roth. Further discussion or debate on Warrant Article 9? I find that the debate on this article is over and it will be placed on the ballot. Warrant Article 10 pertains to uh, the purchase of a traffic radar message board for the Rollinsburg Police Department, and I'll ask Mr. Rollins to introduce it to us. Mr. Moderator, Article 10 is at the request of the Chief of Police, uh, and uh, the Select Board also recommend. Um, this is to purchase, um, just what it says, a traffic radar message board. In case folks are familiar with those are, those are the things on the side of the road that will tell you, you know, how fast you're going. Um, but it's more than just that, it's also um, a means to communicate with the town. Um, for instance, this meeting today could have been up on this little message board saying, you know, delivery session at the grade school today, tomorrow, whatever way it is. Uh, it could be announced to uh, the road that's closed. And in the last few weeks, we, um, we have the, um, we went from uh, Arctic to mild weather overnight when it went into the 50s and we had all that rain and, uh, and melt. Um, there were a few roads in town that needed to be closed. This could be used to announce that on, on one of those roads. Um, it also can um, uh, track the number of vehicles. Uh, there was one, some concern that um, this would be used for surveillance. It doesn't have a camera that takes pictures of your license plates or anything. It, um, but it does do traffic studies as it talk, talks about how many vehicles go by and at what speed. Um, we've um, we've uh, used the Department of um, Transportation and Department of Safety in the past, and I would assume we still probably need to for, for larger projects to track um, um, uh, traffic patterns on roads. But this is also this could also be used for that too. Uh, the chief tells me tells us. Um, Half of the chief is anticipating that half of this will come from a grant from the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, if it does not, so that's 11900 If it does not, the full amount will come from, uh, from taxation. Thank you, Mr. Rowan. We're in discussion and debate on more Article 10. Seeing none, I find the debate on this article is over and it will be placed on the ballot. Article 11 pertains to improvements to the town hall boiler. 
again, just to roll if I can impose on you. I drew the short straw today, so I get to do them all. All right, so Town Hall Boiler. Um, now we are halfway there. Um, this is a, our boiler currently that's in the Town Hall. Is, uh, uh, we believe 30 years old. The chief said it could be a little older. Uh, it is an insufficient unit for the building of its size. Um, it also is 30 years old. Half of it uh, blew off a number of years ago, the chief tells us, uh, has been hobbled back together um, and is operating, but is incredibly inefficient. I think um, uh, anyone who looks at the other lines in the operating budget seems to heat us, then uh, we'll see how inefficient it is. A couple of that in the installation. Um, there is some concern, I know, by folks that were putting money into an old building that they're hoping that they will scrap. Um, there are still folks that are working in this building. Uh, they need heat. Um, we are hoping to replace the inefficient boiler with a uh, modern Poderis boiler, which is a cast iron boiler that can um, actually keep up with the demands on the size of the, of the, of the building. Uh, $25,000 is the approximate cost to uh, purchase and install. 20000 of that will come from the Capital Improvement Reserve Fund. This money that's currently in the fund right now, and $5,000 of it will come from taxation. And Mr. Rollo, we're in discussion and debate on Warrant Article 11. Building maintenance thing, whether it be 
are going to sell the building or not. We need to bring it up to the standards. The seller may not buy it if we do not replace this. So I think it's a good idea. But I have a couple of questions before I make my final decision. If I'm not mistaken, I mean this will only be the boiler and not the cooling system for the building. And I'm wondering if this system, I heard it's going to be more efficient, but I'm wondering if it's going to be a smaller system or if they're going to gain any space to the storage or will be at the same size. Questions for the moderator regarding uh, impacts on the cooling system and the sizing of the placement. Yeah, this, this will not be affecting the cooling system, the size of the boiler. Um, I don't believe you're going to be gaining, you're not, you're not gaining square footage where you're going to put an office in there. I wouldn't suggest putting an office in that room anyway. But, um, yeah, so no, there, there, there'll be no effect on, on the system. For the debate on Warren Article 11. I find the debate on this Warren Article is over and that it will be placed on the ballot. Uh, Article 12 pertains to the purchase of radios for the Rollinsburg Fire Department. Mr. Rowell, if you would introduce it. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So, Article 12 is um, requesting to purchase radio radios for the um, for the fire department. I believe, I'm going to make sure we have my cheat sheet, so I don't give you the wrong information. 13 radios, I believe, that um, were, were acquired by the department after um, the, the, the tragic events of September 11th, 2001. The state, through the Department of Homeland Security, was granted money to purchase radios in the 2002 budget. So these radios are from 2002. The uh, police department, over several chiefs, have um, maintained them. They are no longer serviceable in certain cases. There are um, issues with uh, battery supply, the life of, of these radios. The select board went over to, um, to, to talk with the fire department a couple of weeks ago after, um, after the loss of Kevin Hurt. And, you know, we asked him, you know, you know, how are things going? They're trying to see how they're doing. And, and one of the things they were telling us, one of the, off, one of the, um, the uh, members of the department told us, um, was talking about his radios. Um, and, and he said he lost radio contact, I remember, two or three times on the scene of, 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 of an accident, I think it was. But the point is, we're asking these folks to go out and, and perform dangerous duties. Um, they, at the very least, the town can do is supply them with proper communication. Um, we're asking, God forbid, you know, I don't mean to laugh, but you know, the chief, uh, the fire chief was in a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about training and things, and I said, you know, well, training for mill files. He said, well, you know, God forbid we ever have to, we ever have to put those into, into practice. And that night they went over to Summersworth to put out, help put out the fire at the old uh, police room. So, um, I just keep my mouth shut, I mean it. But, um, you know, God forbid anything happened in the village, we have some uh, rather large uh, structures down there. And I don't know how I would personally sleep at night asking any member of the wrong fire department to go in and, and put up that building if they can't communicate with them. So I don't know anyone else who could either. So that's why the select board has uh, recommended this board article. I know there's an amendment coming forward that may make it a little more palatable. Uh, I hope it is. Uh, we would uh, strongly encourage you to do it currently as the article is drafted. It will cost 65000 Ten thousand of that will come out of the capital improvement reserve fund. The rest of fifty-five will come from taxation. I know there's, a, there's a, an amendment to come forward to help take some of the sting out of that. Um, we hadn't planned on buying all that number this year, and I would let the, the fire chief speak to you, the resident, as well. But um, his intention is to outfit the, um, the new engine and uh, making sure that there's enough um, radios. For, for those that show up you know, with a backup as well, because 13 seems like an odd number. an odd number. That's the reason why it's so long. But with that, I'll stop and try to answer questions afterwards. We're in discussion and debate on Warren Article 12. Stuart? 
Suzanne Hewitt, Nordic Lane. Mr. Moderator, I propose an amendment to this that uh, changes the source of funding. So it is written. Um, do you want me to read it? Do, do I go ahead? Go ahead and read it. All right. So it would say to see if the town will raise an appropriate sum of uh, $65,000 to replace AG communication venues for the fire department and to further authorize the withdrawal of. And this is where the change comes in. Instead of, instead of $10,000 from the capital improvement reserve fund established for this purpose, I propose that it says, excuse me, withdrawal of $30,000, the new equipment trust fund established for this purpose. And I don't have, when I was looking at the warrant, I didn't have the $55,000 to come from taxation. So this doesn't include the math that would change that. Is that part of the official? So my question is, if that's $55,000 to come from taxation, taxation is part of the official warrant. I'll have to scribble something else here to do the math. So a question through the moderator regarding whether or not the uh, reference to additional uh, amount to come from taxation uh, is part of the warrant article itself, and I believe the answer is yes. All right, then I will borrow a pen and add that and bring it to you. And although it's a formality, I'd like to get a second before we are in discussion. I'll make the second. Okay, and so a motion made by Ms. Heward. Crozier, South Street. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. A motion made by Ms. Heward, seconded by Mr. Crozier, to amend the language of Warrant Article 12. Um, it, and the uh, substance of the amendment would be to substitute the new equipment trust fund as the source of part of the funding and to raise the amount to be withdrawn from that alternate source of uh, funding uh, up to $30,000 from, I believe it was $10,000. So we're in debate on the proposed amendment. Mr. Rollo has a comment. Okay, we have competing comments, but I, I think the, the, the select board just, just polled the members that we, we, we would see this as a friendly amendment and we thank I brought it forward in the seconder. Um, the, the, the account is an old account that uh, I just lost it. The new equipment trust fund, um, which currently has uh, $30,573.88 last uh, check, um, is separate from the, the CIP fund that the past board several years ago, um, which we'll talk about in another, another article. Um, we had intended to, to roll this over to, you'll see in, in further down the warrant, to, to close this account anyways and roll it into the general fund. I think it makes complete sense. We have talked to the department. So when this was brought up, I believe, by a uh, member of the budget committee, um, we didn't have the, we didn't know if it was permissible or not at the time um, because of the, the title of, of the fund. We had to do some research uh, between the Department of Revenue, Town Council, Town Administrator, a little bit of the Select Board, Town Moderator. We, we have uh, determined and established that this money can in fact be used for that, for that purpose. So I would see this as a, as a positive thing. It would be less to come directly from taxation. So I'll defer to the Town Administrator. I think I forgot to say something. Ms. Kendall. I just want to add that um, through the exploration of using this um, new capital reserve fund, um, through that conversation with the Mayor of the Okay. All right. So I, I apologize. So um, while we were talking to the State Department of Revenue about the legality of potentially using this equipment capital reserve fund for this purpose, it came to light that the Department of Revenue, at the very least, does not favor the idea of using the CIP reserve fund for this purpose because it is equipment rather than, you know, what they consider maybe a capital purchase. And, and while it may be permissible, it's just cleaner to eliminate that as a funding source. Mr. Crozier? Crozier, South Street, Indiana. So to clarify, if the total gross allocation is 65000 less 30000 from the new equipment trust fund, 
leaving a balance of $35,000 to be raised by taxes. Is that my understanding? Their understanding, too? So a question through the moderator for the select board about the impact of the amendment, which would be to uh, raise $35,000 uh, taxation. Okay. Mr. Rowell? I think we're on the same page. That, okay. I think that's that was the intention. I think that what I heard. Well, we went back and forth and back and forth. I think I think it, that, that I don't have in front of me, but from what I was listening to, I think it, you said thirty thousand. No, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. So it would still be another thirty-five would be required from tax. But not fifty-five. Correct. So that would be amended. It should be amended to uh, thirty-five. Further discussion and debate on the amendment. Is the So this year, 
looking at all of the looking at the schedule of, of, uh, of items we're anticipating and trying to keep the tax rate stable. We're looking at uh, putting in 179.4, like I said. So currently, if I can find my own notes, uh, currently the fund, because it always someone asks, there's 336,399 dollars in the fund, and this blue sheet over on the back table will also provide all that information to you. Um, if everything on um, on the warrant is going to change now, and I should have done that math while while um, we were having this conversation about the radio. If everything were to pass at the end in the money, everything that we're asking to take out of capital improvement and money putting back in, if everything were to pass, the offset would be about fifty-two thousand dollars. So that means at the end of the day the capital reserve fund would still have $281,734 and we're going to increase that by $30,000 now because, um, you know, $10,000 rather, math challenge this point, uh, $10,000, so that's $291,000, even I can do that, um, difference. So we're still, even though we're taking money out this year, a large chunk of $165,000, we're hoping to, the voters approve it. Um, there is money that has been already in the account to offset those, and we're putting additional money in. So at the end of the day, there's still be 291,000 for projects moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Rollo. We're in discussion, oh, we're in discussion and debate on Ward Article 13. I find that the debate on Article 13 is over. The article will be placed on the ballot. Article 14 pertains to the Town Revaluation Capital Reserve Fund. And I'll ask Mr. Rollo to introduce that article to us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Every five years, the state of New Hampshire requires us to do a reevaluation of property in the town. Either that's a, a really good thing for you as a property owner, or it's a not so good thing for you as a property owner, depending on your perspective. Um, your taxes have to go up, they go down, or sometimes they stay the same, depending on the valuation of your property. And then it's the overall valuation of the property of the town that helps determine what the tax rate will be discussing this morning. Uh, currently the fund has $26.49 in it. You say, my goodness, it's only $26.49. That's because we put in enough money every five years to pay for the reevaluation. And we just did one. So now we're in a rebuilding year again. So we're asking that uh, the town uh, raise to appropriate uh, $18,750. And that is a uh, the number divided by five years, so if you multiply that number by five, that's what it will cost in the end of the reevaluation. So in the fifth year, we will have the money in the account um, for it if, if the town goes to uh, appropriate that is, to pay for the uh, reevaluation. So we don't come to you and say, oh, by the way, we need seventy plus thousand dollars, eighty plus thousand dollars this year for the reevaluation. Surprise! Uh, so again, it's a savings account to do the reevaluation. Thank you, Mr. Rollo. We're in discussion, debate, and request for information on Warrant Article 14. Uh, Judy Nelson, Nordic Lane. I'm just curious, since this is something that we raise every year in order to meet our, our obligation to the state, why is it not part of the operating budget? Why is it always a special warrant? Question to the moderator regarding why it's not part of the operating budget. Mr. Rollo. I think, thank you for the question, I think. Um, I, I, I'm trying to answer this in a way that doesn't make me seem like a smart. I think you would need to ask, I don't know, I, that's probably the best way to say it. I think you would have to ask the past boards and past town meetings. This is the way they, they wanted to do it. I, I don't know. I don't think there's any requirement by the state. Maybe there is, but some things seem to think. I think you might want to phone a friend and say, okay, sure, why are we doing it this way? <laughs> of all the Warren articles, this was not the one I thought I'd be answering the question on. <laughs> it's, it's a really good question, but the long and short of it is that the money in the operating budget expires, so to speak, at the end of the year. So you, we don't have otherwise the ability to put money in a savings account unless we do it by this mechanism. Thank you. I should have known that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion on my feet, sorry. Further discussion or debate on Warrant Article 14. I find that the debate is ended and the article will be 
placed on the ballot. Article 50 relates to Culvert Repair Replacement Reserve Fund. Again, Mr. Rall, if you would introduce it. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, and I know the answer to this one, and it's the same answer as the one before the question was asked. Uh, this is to uh, put uh, $10,000 into our, our capital reserve fund. Um, it's our savings account, uh, much like it's our savings account for the previous one, um, to, um, to deal with um, culvert maintenance and repair. Uh, we have a, a number of projects, an ongoing project, a number of on, uh, uh, culverts in this town that are in uh, various um, degrees of disrepair and repair. Um, the $10,000 specifically um, is to um, help alleviate some uh, issues on Sligo Road. Um, you'll recall five, five, six years ago now, um, there was a, there is an issue, um, has been an issue on the uh, on the end of Sligo Road, closer to Bear Road, where there is a um, most of us think of it as a bridge. It's um, it's not a bridge. Uh, it's a culvert. Uh, there were some issues, some structural issues, with that, um, and the town was facing either having to close the road or reducing restricted travel on that on that um, culvert, um, and the town restricted um, usage. It went down to one lane. Um, since then, there has been work that's been done over there, with, uh, and our town, working with an engineering firm, Oil Tanner Associates, and our road agent. Uh, they believe that if there is some um, bolstering of um, the embankments, that um, you know, moving the Jersey barriers back, which I believe they have to move back now, um, we can reopen it to, to two lanes again, which is good news. Um, and, um, there's also another culvert, also on Slide Road, um, on the other end, by where the farm is. Um, that um, also needs to be repaired. There, it's a very strange system that they set up years ago. There's two culverts on top of one another. Um, our, um, our road agent has cleaned out both of them, I believe, but one of them um, may need a uh, slip line, we call it, um, or perhaps not. Maybe we're, we're, we're going to get a, a camera down there, but there needs to be some, some work there, too, done. There's a um, large pond. Uh, the, I don't want to call it a dam, maybe it is, but um, that um, was established uh, for whatever reason that a very long time ago. But it, when it rained in significant rainstorms, the road could flood and it has over the years. It, I think it's gotten much better. Our road agent tells us that it's much better than any residents who have probably noticed it. It's a lot better than it was because it's been cleaned out, but um, if it's not properly maintained, um, you will have erosion on the road and you will lose the road. Good. Um, it's a lot more expensive to replace the road than uh, maintain the culvert. So part of that money would go for that as well. But there's no shortage, I can assure you, of uh, culvert issues in the town of Rollins. So, but that's why the $10,000 is being placed on the issue. Thank you, Mr. Rollo. And before I open discussion and debate on Ward Article 15, uh, I disclose to the legislative body, if you didn't already know it, I have a conflict of interest. I am on a butter. My, my family is a butter of one of those culverts, and the close family members um, are owners or abutters of the other culverts. So if there is any objection to me moderating the discussion of this article, I will step down. Full, I guess in full disclosure, that my family built one of the houses in whatever, 17 something or other, floated it down the river. So, so you may also have it. I have, a, uh, I have no stake in the game, though. But. All right. All right, we are in discussion and debate. I, I think I can do this uh, moderating fairly, so uh, if you have at any point questions about my fairness and impartiality, let me know. We're in discussion and debate on Article 15. All right, I find that the debate on Article 15 is over and that article will be placed on the ballot. Article 16 pertains to the Conservation Land Trust Capital Reserve Fund, and Mr. Rollo will introduce that to us. Right. So, Article 16, the Conservation Land and Capital Trust Reserve Fund. Um, this was established a number of years ago to um, to see if the town, <coughs> um, if there were possibilities for the town to purchase conservation land easements uh, to preserve open spaces in town. Um, we're asking the board. It's a boiler sort of. A, it's become sort of a boilerplate annual 
ask over the years. Um, we're asking to put 10000 into it. Um, none of this comes from taxation. The money um, comes from the, uh, the land use change tax fund. Um, um, if you have a piece of property that's in current use uh, and you take it out, you pay the land use change tax. And so um, part of it goes into that fund. Ten, if there is if there is ten thousand dollars to come out of that fund for this purpose, it would do. We would take it out of that. Uh, it, like I said, none of it comes from taxation. And currently, in the Can uh, Conservation Land Trust Capital Reserve Fund, we have one hundred and forty-five thousand five hundred and fifty-one dollars. Thank you, Mr. Rollo. We're in discussion and debate on Ward Article Sixteen, Ms. Leopold. I have a couple of questions. Um, one is. Is there a cap on how much you hope to put in this account? So, question to the three questions to the moderator, or through the moderator, regarding caps and previous amounts, and there's a third one. Looks like Mr. Rollo is ready to respond. I'm going to try, Mr. Moderator. Um, the cap would be ten thousand dollars to go in for this year. Um, and we only can put it in if we have the money coming out of the land use change tax fund. So that means someone in town would have to have taken land out of current use. They have to pay that tax um, to the state and county. Um, and then we get a portion. Um, how much has been put into the account historically? I, I can only tell you what's in there right now. $145,551. And I've already forgotten that. The th when does it happen? It can happen. Yeah, so it can happen at any time during the year. Again, remember, it only goes in if if there's money in via the land use change tax. So if no one takes anything out of current use this year, um, and no one pays the land use change tax, then nothing's going in. Uh, if someone does, and there is, it does. It can. It, the cap is ten thousand dollars, so it can't go over. That. How much could ever be in the account? There, I don't believe there is a cap. I mean, but if the fund was established to help conserve uh, land, open space in the town. So, thank you, Mr. Rollo. Thank you, Ms. Leopold. Mr. Crozier. Okay, there's a land use change tax fund of forty-three thousand dollars. Are you saying that nobody changes to current use just this year, no money will be transferred? Because that's not what it reads. It says money will, 10,000 will be transferred from the land use change tax fund. And we got 43,000 in that. Thank you for correcting me. I think I may have, I may have misspoken. I'm sorry. So yes, but it can only come from that fund. So, okay, so it will be $10,000. So, but then um, that fund would be replenished if someone took something out of the current use. It would go back into that. But I, I apologize to the body if I if I missed it. I did this. I know I, not if I did, but I did. Thank you, Mr. Kirsch. Thank you, Mr. Rollo. Ms. Hewitt. This is Ann Hewitt, Mary Glenn. So I hate to be in the paper, but I am. Um, this, the way this is currently written, we are raising that $10,000, whether it's in the, uh, the locked fund or it's not in the locked fund. The fact, and I never said anything to the board or anybody else because the money is there, but um, we have to be careful about how we write these things, and so if we're going to vote to raise and appropriate, and the source isn't, and we say 10000 is coming from that, I think the DRA would still say, well, you're going to have to get it from taxation because you're saying you're raising it. So that's my dynamic. Nobody needs to say anything. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hewitt. Oh, but I will. <laughs> I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this is the same line when we, we didn't create this, right? This is what we took this from previous years, right? For these sort of standard 
I, just, well, I, I agree. I don't. I, if this is the case, if we have to change it, then we we should be thinking about that for uh, this year or for next year. We know we have the money in it for this year, but moving forward, we want to make sure it's clear. So, did we didn't we just take the Mr. Rall? I'm going to remind you that that I'll call on people to to respond, but um, that's just fine, Ms. Kendall. I think the point that Suzanne is trying to point out, which is well taken, that there's the additional language, no amount to come from taxation. And that, that phrase there, we should be very careful about because should that balance decrease to the point that it is required to come from taxation, we need to make sure that the article is supported appropriately. Sounds like that question has been cleared up. Thank you. Was I have a quick follow-up question. If the money moves into this account, or the money that is moving into this account, will it be, will it require a town meeting um, to withdraw the fund, or are there agents of this fund? Okay, question uh, through the moderator regarding agents of the fund, Mr. Brown. If we need to be approved the town meeting, it requires a town meeting vote uh, to withdraw it. Yes. Is there further discussion and debate on Warren Article 16? find that the debate on Article 16 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Article 17 relates to land surveys and related expenses, and Mr. Rowell will introduce it to us. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So this, uh, this um, article is also another one of those perennial articles that comes up. Um, if someone wants to donate an easement, or if we're trying to purchase a, through a private sale, from a landowner in town to conserve open space, to conserve conservation, to, to create conservation lands. Um, this money would help with a, uh, with the surveying costs. Um, there is no amount, none of it comes from taxation. Uh, we would um, withdraw the $5,000 from the Conservation Land Trust Capital Reserve Fund, which was Article 16 that we've just debated. Um, and we would only, I believe, only withdraw that if there was a request that came forward. Uh, so, um, again, there's no amount to come from taxation. And this is, you know, to help, as I said, to offset the cost of surveying and other, uh, other um, uh, logistical issues that may come up if someone wanted to donate land to the town. Or we want to purchase it. Thank you, Mr. Rowell. Discussion and debate on Article 17. I find that debate on Article 17 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Warrant Article 18 relates to the closing of trust funds and uh, Mr. Rollo will introduce that article to us. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. So, going through the, um, on this blue sheet, there were a number of, um, of trust funds that were created over the years um, by previous town meetings that, um, have very little balances in them, and their, um, their, uh, the services or, or the, the reason behind them are, um, are, are achieved through other funds. So you'll see in here there's a police cruiser reserve fund. That's covered by the CIP now. I feel like I said not too um, Transfer station compact reserve fund. Again, that would be covered under the CIP. Property reevaluation trust. We already have another one we've already discussed um, previously that, that was established for that. So it's a, it's a duplicate um, fund. Um, there's the Sligo Culvert Reserve Fund that was established just specifically to deal with one issue. Again, we have a Culvert Reserve Fund that deals with, it can deal with any culvert in town, not just specific to one. Um, they carry a balance, I believe, all together of about $16 and change, maybe. Um, it seems to the select board uh, that it um, would be cleaner. It would be it's a housekeeping measure, basically, to close up some some um, to um, close up some funds that really get, uh, serve no purpose in the law. Um, and I believe there's a friendly amendment coming, so I'll just be quiet and we'll talk about it. Thank you, Mr. Rowell. We're in discussion on Warren Article 18, Mr. Crozier. I will offer an amendment. I agree that this is really a housekeeping issue. These accounts, one since we're folded in the other trust accounts. But as worded, it said anything that's left over, and we're really talking about $16 to 60 cents. Uh, I'm suggesting that we change the last phrase where it's transferred to the general fund 
that would be transferred to the Capital Improvement Reserve Fund because these were, in effect, capital improvements funds, and that's really where that big amount of money really belongs. Okay, Mr. Crozier has proposed an amendment to Warren Article 18 that requires a second. Is there a second? Mrs. Dion, um, Nancy Dion is offering a second to that. We're in discussion on the proposed amendment to Warren Article 18, which would change the target fund from the general fund to the capital improvement reserve fund. Is there discussion, debate, or request for information on the proposed amendment, Mr. Rowan? Um, the select board will see this as a friendly amendment. It doesn't have any objections. Okay. Is there further discussion and debate on the proposed amendment to Warren Article 18? Getting ready to call the vote. A yes vote on the proposed amendment will change the target fund to the capital improvement reserve fund. A no vote will leave the Warren article as it's currently worded, providing that the target fund is the general fund. So that is the background. Are we ready for a vote? Those in favor of the amendment to Warren Article 18, please raise their card. Thank you very much. Please lower your cards. Those opposed to uh, the proposed amendment to Warren Article 18, please raise your card. And those abstain. I'm able to declare that the uh, vote on the amend proposed amendment is in favor, uh, and so the Warren Article as amended is now the subject of discussion. Is there further discussion, debate, or request for information on Warren Article 18? I find that the debate on Warren Article 18 is over. The article as amended will be placed on the ballot. <coughs> article 19, acceptance of Wentworth Street and Pleasant Street extensions as public roads. And Mr. Oh, and before I ask Mr. Raul, um, thank you to everyone who has proposed amendments today for putting them in writing. It makes everyone's jobs a lot easier. Thank you. Mr. Raul. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We're getting close to the end. So this war article will, will, um, will create um, extensions of uh, Wentworth Street and Pleasant Streets um, that, were, um, that were created by uh, the, the, the Scout Landing development uh, as town roads. Um, the, the beginning parts of Wentworth and Pleasant Streets are town roads, so it's the extensions that, that this development um, has created the addition of um, the extension of a town road. Um, these projects were have gone through the zoning process, have gone through the planning board, and it's, it's really, it's, this is very much a housekeeping measure as well. The roads have been inspected by the, the um, uh, what they call the town engineer, an engineering firm that we have contracted with. Um, there were a number of um, what I would characterize as small I don't want to call it, not deficiencies, but there were some concerns that the road agent and the engineer had in um, in some of the um, uh, smaller culverts for drainage that were plugged up um, with debris um, because of the snowstorms uh, that we had. We had asked Jim to clean that up. Uh, they had agreed to the company that they were contracting with to, to, to perform that work couldn't get it done before the first snow happened. Um, so they have issued us a check. Um, and that amounts about 3,000 and change um, at, the, at the level of work. So it's not a, a huge amount of money, but again, we wanted to make sure that if we were going to put this on the warrant to accept this road, uh, that the town wouldn't be on the hook for cleaning these things up. Um, so they have issued us a check. Once the work has been performed, um, we would return the money to them. It's not ours, but we wanted as, a, as, a, uh, as an assurance that the work would actually get done. So this is uh, this would just be officially accepting those roads as town roads. And again, um, there are uh, this has gone through the the, the, uh, the planning process, um, and these folks built these um, these projects in good faith, um, with the knowledge that if they built it to the specs of the town required them to. But these roads will be accepted as town municipal roads. So, thank you, Mr. Rollo. We're in discussion and debate on Warren Article 19. Mr. Foss? I have a question concerning the Wentworth Road. Is that actually built and been certified to meet the planning board's plan? 
question to the moderator about the um, uh, whether or not it meets the requirements of the plan. Mr. Uh, yes, it has. It's been, it was certified by Mr. Stevens from uh, civil consultants over in uh, South Dakota. Now, somebody had been on the planning board to approve. I went over there the other day, the first time, to see what it looked like. I was in total shock and awe how terrible that road was designed. You walk off a church street, it's nice and wide, and it narrows real quick. Downhill to a hammerhead, it's got two bobbins to stop you at the end of the road going downhill. Now, to turn around, you have to go into the people's driveway. How did this ever get through the planning board? So I guess. I, I was not on the planning board, nor have I been on the planning board when this came up. But somebody here had been on the board. How did it get approved? Is what I would like to know. Okay, so a question to the moderator regarding the approval process for that road design, Mr. Roll. Uh, none of us, none of us sitting at this table were um, on the planning board when this passed. We're not. So I, I, I don't know how, why, when, why it passed, why they were given certain requirements. I can't tell you that. All I know is that looking at the plan that the planning board did approve that the engineers that was built to the specifications that were outlined in that plan, but none of us were part of that process when the project was was first uh, proposed or, or, or uh, approved. So, yes, we have to take on a pretty good, I think, big problem. So, objectively, me as a resident of town, why would I want to take that on? I prefer to say no and take my chances. Let's get it ironed out so it's a good road for people Okay, so that's offered as a comment. So, my, my oh, I'd like to make a response. All right, let's let Mr. Foss finish, oh, and then, then you can respond. So, Mr. Foss, anything, any further comment or question? No. Okay, Mr. Rowell, I think you should respond. I, I think that the um, I think that the um, sort of the gut reaction is probably to say that to do that, but um, again. This firm built this road um, to the specifications that the planning board laid out that were that were part of the Rollinsford zoning ordinances. Um, if we don't approve a road that they built in good faith using our standards to a plan that was approved by the planning board, uh, I'm not an attorney, but I would imagine that they would probably have a pretty good case to sue us because they follow the rules and we're not living up to our end of the bargain. So, I, 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 again, I'm not an attorney, but I would, would not want to open the town up to that liability because every step of the way, they they had to meet the obligations that the town set out for them. Now, if we don't like what those obligations were, I think we should go back and revisit what the zoning ordinance says and perhaps change that. But I don't think you can hold um, a company liable for, fall, for playing by the rules that we set up. I agree with your statements there, Mike, but here again, how did it get through the planning board? I mean, nobody with common sense would put a, a sock on a downhill slope. And Mr. Foss, I'm going to leave that as a comment because if you asked it in the, the plan, and Mr. Rawl responded that they weren't on the planning board. So we'll leave it as a comment. Any further comments? Just understand where I'm coming from. I mean, it doesn't make good sense from any standpoint. So why should we accept it? Thank you, Mr. Foss. Any further discussion, debate on Warren Article 19? <coughs> um, so, yeah, well, I abut one of these roads, and I am just curious if the select board, and I don't see the road agent here anymore, have talked about snow removal because it's probably going to end up flooding down the hill towards my property and possibly um, at least on um, um, Pleasant Street. All the snow gets piled there now, um, and that's a T.U. Hammer and T. I don't know if there's a plan to move the snow somewhere else or to pile it up there. And my other concern is enforcement. Does the police department currently have enforcement over those roads? Um, because they people park in a no parking zone, and I don't know if it's signed, and that would affect snow removal on other public safety. So two questions to the moderator, uh, one related to the snow removal plan and the second related to uh, law enforcement enforcement action. Uh, 
So we'll take the snow removal first. Um, I would have to go back and look at the plan. I don't know what it says. Um, what the, where they're supposed to be depositing their snow. Um, it would be up to the uh, select board to enforce uh, the provisions of the, um, of the plan. So we would look at that. We haven't had any complaints. And it's, uh, the project has been going on for a few years now, several years. Um, Beth Hunt said that it couldn't become an issue, so we would have to look at the plan. Uh, the second part of your question, um, if it's, it's not a town road at the moment, that end of the, of the road is not a town road, um, so there are no parking restrictions there. It is not, that part of the road um, is not plowed by the municipality. It's the responsibility of the developer to maintain snow removal at, at the moment, um, just like it's the responsibility on a, a couple of other road, another road in town, um, Greenview Drive. That is not officially a town road yet either. Um, so that's the responsibility of the owner of that road to maintain it. So we we would not be ticketing people for parking or no parking zone because the no parking zone doesn't exist. So I think. Just to clarify the question, Mr. Rollo, I think the question is, is there a plan in place once it becomes a town road, and will there be law enforcement once it becomes a town road? Sure. Yeah, thank you for saving me for myself again. I need it all the time. Um, yes, of course. If, if, it's, uh, if it's a posted no parking zone in the other part of the road, then once it becomes a town road, you will meet with the police department, and we will ensure that our ordinances are all up to date, and, and, and that um, the, the laws of Municipal um, uh, ordinances are enforced regarding what the point worth is in the pleasant street. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Is there a further question or comment? Uh, just a comment. I did go through a lot of the planning process because this is so close to where I live, and I do know that one of the things discussed through the planning process is because they put in the sidewalk, there's supposed to be no parking on that street. So I'm hoping that the police department can enforce that once it happens and that notifications go up. And I hope the select board holds the current developer to getting those signs so it doesn't become a tax for its own Thank you, Ms. Leopold. Any further questions, commenters, or debates on Article or discussion on Article 19? find that the debate on Article 19 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Warrant Article 20 relates to traditional appointments made at town meeting. And I'll ask Mr. Rollo to introduce that to us. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So those of you that have attended the traditional town meeting, our last one was last year. Um, we're under, operating obviously under a different set of guidelines this year. Um, at town meeting, we appointed um, certain positions, tree warden, Fence viewer, surveyor of wood and lumber, and the parks and uh, recreation. Um, this board article is asking that um, we have those positions appointed uh, via the select board. Um, I think it's safe to say, with the exception of maybe parks and recreation, but uh, the other officers, especially the fence viewer, um, which is actually one of the oldest positions in our country. A leftover office from colonial times when they were actually you know, looking to make sure people maintained their fences so livestock didn't be able to get the properties. Not as much of an issue with that these days, but um, um, it's a traditional nicety. It, it, it had become the practice of, of the town meetings to, um, to honor a, a, a resident in town, um, giving them that position. Same with um, um, tree warden and the surveyor of Fort um, The select board, this select board, anyways, would like to continue the tradition of honoring um, uh, citizens that have um, uh, given their time and service to the town by um, by appointing them to those positions. Uh, the parks and rec. There's some to go back and forth on that one. It seems that um, that. It, these folks are supposed to be um, dealing with the physical, like physical parts uh, of, of the town, and uh, proposing recreational facilities. Um, I'm sure you all know that we have a recreation committee that's separate from this. Uh, the select board seem to be going back and forth. The ones I've served on that um, is there a duplication? I'm not sure, but 
that may be something we work on separately in another year. But the other ones certainly are hard to honor. Uh, uh, prominent residents of the town that, that, that give up their time and service to make the town a better place. Um, if this doesn't pass, um, part of this Warren article is asking that they just be done away with. Because if not, we're going to have to place them on on the on the ballot. And no, oh, sorry, let me back that up. That's right. They won't. They just go away. That's right. We talked with um, with uh, DRA about that as well. But as they're not sort of official positions, they would go away. So again, we, we would like to. Now another board may come next year and tell you something different. But this board would like to continue that tradition of honoring those citizens that would ask you to accept and pass this board. Thank you, Mr. Rollo. Discussion and debate on Warren Article 20. By the debate on Article 20 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Article 21 is the uh, request authority to sell surplus equipment and vehicles. And if Mr. Rollo has had a chance to get a sip of water, you introduce it. I'm a little strong, but thank you. Um, yes, so this is a, a war article that appears every year. This grants, uh, just as the title says, the select board authority to sell surplus vehicles or other um, or other equipment. In the past, that's meant when we replace a, a cruiser, we can put it up to bid and sell. A number of years ago, we sold uh, a fire truck that had been sitting in the old town shed for decades. We finally got rid of that. Um, so again, this just gives us the authority to do that. It doesn't give us the authority to sell land or anything like that. We would have to come back to, uh, to, um, to the legislative body this meeting and ask for that, but it's just to, to sell small pieces of equipment that we don't need. Everyone has a uh, purpose for the Thank you, Mr. Rollo. Is there any discussion debate on Article 21? I find that Article, the debate on Article 21 is over and the article will be placed on the ballot. Article 22 allows this uh, legislative body to conduct any other business that can legally come before it. I recognize Ms. Hanson. Go ahead, you wanted to make an announcement? On behalf of the Rollinsburg Public Library, we'd like to announce that we're having a February fundraiser. We have been lucky enough to be selected as one of the nonprofit organizations um, by the A Caring Community, which is a nonprofit that operates out of every name. They operate a resale boutique called Fabulous Time Resale Boutique. All of the profits for the month of February will be shared by the library and two other worthy organizations. So we're hoping that each of you will, number one, shop at the Resale Boutique. That's the Fabulous Fine Resale Boutique. It is on State Road in Kittery. When you go south of the circle, it's on the right. It's got a sign that you will notice if you look back there on the table. We've had some brochures about it. And we're very excited to help you do that. In the meantime, should you have anything that is gently used and clean that you're not keeping in the way of um, men's and women's clothing, small antiques, small lithograph that you like that you no longer have room for or you're downsizing, please you may bring it to the resale boutique any day um, during the month of February and they will use it to replenish their stock. In the meantime, we will have collection tomorrow at the library from 10 a.m. until 1 if you can't get over the and you can meet with the library and we will bring it down for you. I thank you and hope that you support the library. Thanks so much. Thank you. Before I offer some thanks, uh, is there any other business? Mr. St. Hilaire? I'm St. Hilaire with the water school. Uh, this is kind of you know, the next water and sewer meeting is, the annual meeting, where someone answers that question. Question uh, through the moderator about where the next annual water and sewer board meeting will be. Ms. Kendall. There, there is information coming out about that. It's going to be on Tuesday, March 26th at the American Legion. I'm not totally sure about the time. It's either 6 or 6 Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I, I encourage everybody that lives in the water to serve the platform to make that meeting because it's going to be very, very important. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um and I'll also make a request. Um, I feel very privileged to serve as your moderator. Um, one of the 
things that comes with the vast authority of the moderator is to have an assistant moderator. Um, if I ever get hit by a bus, if I ever need to take a, as an elderly person, need to get to the bathroom, um, I don't have somebody that I can designate to fill in for me. Uh, and I would very much encourage um, everyone in the room, uh, and if you know somebody that you want to encourage to come speak with me, um, I think the town would be very well served to have an assistant moderator or two. Uh, and I'd be, there are good training programs available, and I'd be happy to, uh, you know, just talk with somebody about what goes into the job and uh, help prepare people for the work. Um, so before we take a motion to adjourn, I want to thank the supervisors of the checklist, the Rollinsford Police Department, the uh, town clerk, the town administrator, the select board, the um, budget committee, and town legal counsel. A lot of people do a lot of work for us uh, as a community. Many of them, some of them are uh, our employees, many of them are just our friends and neighbors who give a lot of time to this process. Uh, and so I, I, th I think we all owe them a, a debt of gratitude and let's give them a round of applause. And my last thank you is to all of you for giving up you know, a big chunk of your Saturday morning to participate here. Um, do we need help putting chairs away? We don't know. I so. don't think so, no. Okay. He's, he's, sometimes they like to fold it and put it against the wall, but not in the rack. Okay. So we don't think we need help, and I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Dio, motion to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, and thank you all very much.